Well, joining me now is Denise Naylor, and uh, Denise is going to be talking to me about how she is addressing the issue of Section 24. But Denise, you've got a lot of property-related business interests, so first of all, I'd be interested to know what else do you do apart from being a landlord? Well, thank you, Vanessa. Well, I am a part-time university teacher in accounting and finance theory. And my real interest is cash management and decision making. Mm -hmm. I own a publishing, small publishing company, which does publish in the arena of cash management. Mm -hmm. You wanted to actually talk about how Section 24 is affecting you. And um, first of all, to give a perspective, what kind of landlord would you say you are? Well, I do own my properties in my own name, so I am a sole trader landlord, yep. and I also hold my properties as an investment, so I'm not full-time in property. I never have been, and I have no intention of being. So for me, it's an investment, and it's been set up over a period of 29 years, quite slowly. I have one bed flats in London, zones two and three, and I have two bed houses up in the Leeds, Bradford area. And it's aimed really at the first time buyer potentially so it's people at the bottom of the housing rung mm -hmm. and i've built that up slowly i have quite a bit of gearing because i've always had other income and so of course when i heard the budget speech because i heard it live from george osborne i was absolutely astonished mm -hmm. and then i thought i've got to take action pretty quickly mm -hmm. about this because I could see at once, with my knowledge of money management, that I was going to be vulnerable to paying more tax and potentially even to losing my portfolio. Mm -hmm. Now, was incorporation an option for you? Well, absolutely, and I think everybody does need to look across the board at all the p potential options, and I did talk to my tax advisor. But because I've owned my London properties for many years, there's a lot of equity built up in those properties. So for me, it could potentially have resulted in a big capital gains tax bill mm. and then on top of that the fees I would have had to pay to lawyers and tax experts to set it up and change all my mortgages I decided that I would use that budget of money to make some other changes to my portfolio which I have started and I'm in the process of doing. Oh, well this is where it gets interesting so what are you what actions are you taking to mitigate the effects of section 24? Well the way I understand uh, section 24 to come in and of course we haven't seen it yet is that essentially your profit margin as a landlord will be squeezed. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I did was look at all my revenue and costs to see if I could improve my profit margin. Mm -hmm. Now I want to say one thing first, and that is I do consider myself a very fair landlord. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I respect my tenants, and I've always had very, very good relations with my tenants. Mm -hmm. to the so I didn't want to immediately put my squeeze on my tenants. However, I did email straight away to all my lettings agents and indicate to them that this was going to be an issue for me, and therefore, if they were in a position to raise rents, would they please you know, consider doing that? Mm -hmm. Also, I looked at all my costs in great detail. And for example, I started with insurance costs. And I've managed to get portfolio insurance now across the whole portfolio. Very good idea. And that's a lot cheaper for me. Mm -hmm. Then lettings agents. Now, I'm not a person who wants to hammer lettings agents because I find them a valuable service. But two of them have already come forward and offered me a slight reduction in the fees. Because I think that if you tell the people you're in business with what your issues are, mm -hmm. you know, and have a conversation about it, mm -hmm. then maybe they'll come forward. Mm -hmm. Because potentially they're going to lose the business if I sell up. Mm -hmm. So I've already, I'm having conversations with all my lettings agents. As I say, two of them have already reduced fees, which is very nice, thank you. Mm -hmm. My insurance costs are down. And where a tenant goes out, what I have done this tax year, I have spent money refurbing a property, because obviously it is deductible, mm -hmm. so that there's a better standard of the property and we can raise the rent for an incoming tenant. Mm -hmm. I've also told all my lettings agents, please be aware that this tax year, 2016-17, is effectively the last tax year when I'll be able to do any major expenditure. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I will make the expenditure now because in the future it's going to be more difficult for me mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. The second thing I've done is I have sold one of my high equity properties in London mm -hmm. because I've reached retirement age now. Well, 
nearly. <laughs> and I you really, I just felt this is, the whole point about this was it was to fund my retirement. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to lose that objective. And with that money, obviously I put aside what I'm going to have to pay gains tax. Mm -hmm. And then I've done two things with the money. First of all, I have gone against my instinct because I'm an accountant, I'm very risk averse. So my instinct would be pay down debt. Mm -hmm. I have paid a little bit of debt down, but what I've done is I bought for cash a very high yielding property mm -hmm. up north. And that's in, again in my Leeds Brabant area and that is going to generate very nice cash flow. Mm -hmm. And that cash flow I'm going to use to pay down the debt. Oh. So I call it the go bigger mm -hmm. and cut your costs approach. Mm. Do both. Don't just shrink back in fear because actually you'll probably never pay off your debt faster than the tax mm. changes are coming mm. in. Well, that's my, what my numbers show. Mm. So, okay, yes, pay down a bit, but also consider going bigger. Mm -hmm. And I've also made some peer-to-peer -peer loans mm -hmm. to other investors. Now, I was in peer-to-peer -peer lending. It's not new to me and it's not something I recommend people to do without some education, by the yeah. way. But I ha have been in peer-to-peer -peer for a number of years, so I'm stepping up my peer-to-peer -peer lending as well. And of course, at the moment, that's giving me quite a good yield. Wow, that's fantastic. I love your strategy of buying a property for cash and using the cash flow from that to deleverage further. I really like that creative thinking. So just to finish, Denise, um, there are landlords out there that are understandably very concerned about the impact of Section 24. Uh, you know, uh, are really fearful of the future, what single bit of advice would you give them? I think you've just got to face up to your numbers. I really believe that. There's no point hiding under the carpet, so to say. You've got to just run the numbers, and there will be solutions for you. It might be shrinking your portfolio a bit, as I'm having to do. It might be making some other changes. It might be bringing another member of your family on to the title deed of the property to spread the tax burden. There really will be things you can do. Please don't anybody think it's hopeless, but do face up to the numbers. I think that is an absolutely brilliant piece of advice there. And thank you very much for joining me here on Property Tribes, Denise. I've really got a lot of value from talking to you and hearing how proactive you've been in dealing with this. And landlords do have time to prepare, don't they? They do, Vanessa. That's absolutely right. Thank you so much. Thank you.